Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Coming up, my top 12 most carried knives. But before we get to that, I take a look at my very first exposure to a Gareth Bull design. And Joe Flowers teams up with CJRB. All coming up on the Knife Junkie Podcast Midweek Supplemental. This is the show where I get to talk about knives, new knives that are coming out, sub collections in my in my own collection, and uh, new knives that are coming in on loan or um, you know, that I own. It's always nice to own them, but it's also nice to get them on loan because you don't need to own every knife, not every single knife. So, uh, but to experience every single knife is the goal. Uh, so anyway, this is, uh, the midweek supplemental. Let's get into it. First of all, with a pocket check, you know, the pocket check, it's my favorite and first time of the day to show off what I'm carrying and to show off a knife because we have 12 of my most carried coming up. But right now, what am I carrying currently? Uh, right now I have one that um, I haven't carried in a while. I've sort of ignored my ZTs recently, but today I'm carrying my ZT0620 designed by Ernest Emerson himself. And uh, a lot of people think that the zero tolerance Emersons are Emerson at its uh, peak. Peak Emerson, if you will, uh, because Zero Tolerance really constructs a knife beautifully. They do theirs all as frame locks, uh, including the 640. The 640 really is a frame lock with an overlay. Um, but uh, this is a more, uh, the, the 620, the 630, the 630 is based on the CQC8. Uh, these are just full out in the middle of the day frame locks here. Uh, so a lot of people have gravitated towards these uh, over the Emersons, which feature lock stick when you first get them and liner locks and other things that people don't have patience for. Um, but I do, I, I do must say with an, with a real Emerson or with a, with an Emerson knives, Emerson, it is worth the break in. They still, they are one of the knives out there that you still have to break in. And once it's uh, broken in, it's going to be one of your smoothest, most awesome knives. But today it's the Zero Tolerance, which came broken in from the factory uh, when I got this, I don't know, seven years ago, five years ago, something like that. Uh, however, it, it came with a super generic G10 handle with some uh, half-hearted milling in it. It's like, here, we'll put some lines going in this direction here. But otherwise, it's peel ply G10. But here, we'll, we'll give you some lines. And that's what they did. Uh, so for a long time, I loved the knife, especially this beautiful Tanto-shaped blade, which uh, incidentally, this is uh, LMAX, one of my few LMAX knives. Uh, when this came out, it also came out in, I think, S35VN, maybe. And that was the, uh, the, the top of the line one there at the time. And they had a carbon fiber scale on it. But for the LMAX, which was the... Uh, lower level, it was coated. Uh, the the S thirty five VN, you saw all the grind lines. This is just a beautiful Tanto, one of my very favorites. Um, but what I was getting to was, I finally was able to replace the scale with a really nice canvas micarta green canvas micarta scale. Let's let that focus for a second. And uh, yeah, anyway, it has begun to take on my personal filth signature, uh, to quote advanced knife, bro. And, uh, it really is patinaing in a nice way. Anyway. So today I am carrying this 620, a Tanto, not something I carry often. Got to say, excuse me. Next, my fixed blade today, the Ronin. Yes. The Ronin. Uh, I recently spoke with, uh, Michael Janich and, here it is, one of his creations. You know he is uh, all about self-defense, uh, whether it's with a knife or a gun, but we know him for his knife self-defense stuff. And that's where the Yojimbo was born. That's also where the Ronin, uh, the fixed blade, was born. Years ago, he first had a Mike Snowdy 
knife maker from I think Florida making uh, his Ronins and then Spyderco started making them in a different iteration. This is the Ronin 2, I believe. Uh, but just a great Warncliffe sort of uh, self-defense fighting style. Now, the idea behind the Warncliffe as a self-defense knife is that that straight edge is not shying away from the target as your arm arcs by it in a slash. So in a slash with a curved blade, as you, um, as you arc by your target in a slash, as you can see, that curved blade begins to shy away from the target. With a uh, straight edge like this Warncliffe here, uh, as you swipe by in this arc, it is still straight. It is still digging into the target as it moves through. So Michael Janich really specializes in his knife design in these sort of straight edge um, Kiridashi or Warncliffe inspired, Sax inspired uh, blades. And uh, so I was carrying this. This is very thin and so super easy to carry. Now, the one thing about this, and some people might argue other fixed blade Spyderco knives are the huge sort of topography, or I shouldn't say top off, the huge. Um, square footage <laughs> that the, the sheaths take up. I mean, this is a giant sheath. You almost have the same amount of space that the blade equals in uh, in extra on the side. And that's due to the, the mass production of these. It requires a certain machine. And I, I believe that there is not so much as much accuracy. But if you look at this also, there's so much extra left on the outside of the grommets here. So I am going to be making uh, another sheath at home for this, but I've, I've been saying that for months and months now. I am way behind on Kydex because I've made a number of knives that are sitting there waiting for Kydex. I just don't like making the sheaths. And I happen to be hit or miss because I don't write down my data. <sighs> anyway, so that's what I'm carrying today. The Spyderco Ronin. I think too in CTS BD1 N steel and uh, and this giant sheath it comes with uh, soon to be swapped out for one that I make that's more discreet and then the 620 by zero tolerance zero 620 designed by Ernest Emerson and beautifully created by Kai and the zero tolerance folks I miss you zero tolerance uh, I, I'm not so not so fond of your recent offerings. The 308 looked awesome. Actually, I got a chance to uh, uh, check one of those out. I really like it. Not enough to like be seeking it out for my collection personally, uh, but more of that, please. More of that. And more of these Emerson collaborations. The, four, the three of them have been awesome and have been a big part of my carry over the past, I don't know, five years. So more Emersons. And uh, more just robust zero tolerance knives, please. If you want to see my zero tolerance knives and all of my other knives, plus uh, one minute audiograms, little teasers for the interview show, um, check me out on Instagram. The knifejunkie.com slash Instagram is a quick way to get there. Uh, but uh, also, if you're on Instagram and you're searching around and you're just sort of, uh, you know, drooling over other people's knives come drool over my knives the knife junkie.com slash instagram uh recently i've had uh, a number of uh like i said these audiograms but also pictures of the knives i'm carrying and uh it's a nice little break from the day to sit down and take a little portrait you know uh casually display them in the perfect manner cast light upon them uh take the picture run them through filters Make them just right. Put them up there. Texture up. That's what I say. Anyway, check me out on Instagram. You'll see me there. Okay, so next uh, next up is the Actinon Verba knife that we are giving away for the Gentleman Junkie giveaway this, uh, this month of September. Actinon Verba, it's a uh, knife company out of the Czech Republic. They have come out gangbusters with a number of really cool knives. This one is no exception. Uh, this one is the Z300, and it was uh, bequeathed to the channel by Dave. 
at this old sword blade reviews dave thank you so much he checked this out he did a great review of it check check that out uh but also uh he does really really good reviews and oftentimes or sometimes i should say he sends them along to me and we use them as giveaway knives so dave as always greatly appreciated but let me show you the cool packaging here usually i don't show off packaging but acta non verba my latin is a little rusty but i believe that means actions not words and uh if you take that off it's a black uh, box there and then it's got this foam and then look at this it's such a nice presentation you got a little uh sort of puffy sticker i don't know if you were around when i was a kid but we had puffy stickers three-dimensional stickers that had some give and then you have a little not sure what this is oh uh this is some uh lubricant some special grease it's called they call it special grease Love that. And then a little birth card thing here. But check this out. This knife is beautiful. So this is the Gentleman Junkie giveaway knife for the month of September 2021. And first of all, just look at the contour of the handle. It's got a beautiful um, sort of geometric handle. But I look at this in intuitively. I know it's going to be comfortable. And it's going to fill my hand like really nicely. Uh, but then uh, I look at that big flipper and I say, what is that at the end? And it's a little dot of loom that is uh, luminous material, probably radioactive, that is embedded in the flipper tab. I called it a big flipper. It's not a big flipper, but it's a sure flipper for sure. And then I open it up and look at this. And to me, I know it's a cliche. Excuse me, it's a cliche, <laughs> and most knives look like this, but this one really looks like a shark. Look at this thing. It's like you've got the uh, the bullet nose here, you've got the pectoral fin, you've got a bit of belly here, and then you've got the tail, you know, receding down here to the tail. It is beautiful. It, it feels great in hand, and it's got Schleipner steel. And uh, so this is a, what is this? It's, it's on uh, nylon washers. It's got great action. It's got a deep carry pocket clip so deep, so deep, so pocket clip that it will drop into your pocket and not a single centimeter, not a single millimeter of the handle will show. So yeah, this is what we're giving away. This is what you get as a knifejunkie.com uh, Patreon member. Um, at the gentleman junkie level. Uh, every month on Thursday Night Knives, the third Thursday of the month, we do a giveaway where Jim puts all the names of all the gentleman junkies on a wheel and we spin it and randomly someone is selected. So uh, I'm really loving this Acta Non Verba. They have come out with a bunch, of, like they came out of the gate with a whole slew of super cool knives, a uh, couple of fixed blade knives that I'm crazy about. And so um, I'm very excited to be giving this away, but also a little bit hesitant because it would go so nicely in my own collection. By the way, right here, uh, uh, before the swedge starts, it's nicely crowned. This knife has a lot of uh, sort of really nice European features to it, like the, like the crown, the deep carry, the, the really good action and the nice milling in the handle so please uh join us over on patreon uh and become a gentleman junkie and get your name thrown in the hat to win this acta non verba z 300 uh quickest way to do that is to head over to the knife junkie.com slash patreon that's the knife junkie.com slash patreon don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase. And now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, or on a pillow, coaster, tote bag, coffee mug, water bottle, sticker, pen, or apron. And with COVID-19, you definitely need a don't take dull for an answer face covering. Let everyone know that you're a Knife Junkie with your don't take dull for an answer merchandise. Get yours at www 
www.theknifejunkie.com forward slash dull. That's www.theknifejunkie.com forward slash dull. See, guys, it's not all that bad. You can get a face covering. I love that. Definitely, definitely check that out. And, uh, you know, I think a coaster is uh, what I need. I have a bunch of coasters at work, you know, moving around with beverages throughout the day. I think a don't take dull for an answer coaster is something I'm going to do. All right. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Jim designed those, and I think they look awesome. And, uh, they are part of the of the um, what do you call it? The merchandise spectrum of cool stuff you can get knife junkie wise. All right, so let's talk Joe Flowers. You know Joe Flowers. He has a bunch of designs with Condor uh, knives out of El Salvador. He's a big time uh, survivalist and sort of a jungle. What would you call it? Jungle survivalist um, expert. But he's also a knife expert and a knife design expert. And he's done a bunch of knives, like I said, with Condor, which seems right up his alley due to the kind of work he does. Excuse me, with survival. But now he's got a knife with CJRB. And uh, it's it's uh, not quite out yet. And they don't know exactly when it's coming out. Uh, but if you look at it, it is... It is CJRB high tech uh, Chinese awesome manufacturing mixed with survival. So look at this thing. It's a drop point blade. You've got a sort of a decorative fuller, I would imagine. That fuller is there to also lighten things up, but it's in there AR RPM9 steel. Uh, and that's a, a proprietary blade steel uh, from CJRB. CJRB is the sort of uh, budget line from uh, artisan cutlery. Then they've proved the, proven themselves as an outstanding OEM and uh, an original design manufacturer. And they've begun uh, taking on work from famous designers. And I think that this is a, an interesting way to go because uh, I, I, I really feel like the market is saturated. And I don't mean saturated like it can't take any more, which I guess is kind of what saturated means. But uh, I feel like there is uh, an endless amount of flippers, uh, liner lock and frame lock flippers out there, uh, all really like excellently manufactured. It's a matter of design. Do you like the design? Yes, then you're going to like the knife. But there's not as much of that. I feel like fixed blade knives have been ignored uh, to some extent. And I don't mean that necessarily in a negative way, but uh, I, I think it's because folders sell more. You can carry them easier. Uh, but I like seeing uh, Joe Flowers go in the direction of something like this, which is, okay, that's a four inch blade. That's something that could easily be EDC'd. That's not just a uh, lost in the jungle uh, sort of survival knife. That is a do-it-all kind of knife. Um, so I don't know. It's kind of an interesting and exciting thing to see because you have someone who's got the survival cred, street cred, if you will, jungle cred of Joe Flowers. Uh, but he's making this fixed blade knife that could easily be um, integrated into your suburban lifestyle uh, and yet, you know, it's uh, vetted and designed for something more extreme if that ever pops up. And, you know, I've got an imagination. That's a big part of it for me. Like, you know, why do I have so many tactical knives? I don't get in knife fights, but I like the idea of being prepared for them. <laughs> so having Joe Flowers make something with CJRB and having it be a four inch fixed blade, manageable, EDCable fixed blade knife is cool and exciting. So check that out. Uh, and plus it's in their A A R R P M nine proprietary steel, which, uh, by all accounts is turning out to be a pretty damn good steel. Excuse me. I think it is uh, similar to 440 C or am I thinking, um, well, okay. I'm not sure exactly what it's, what it's akin to, but there are plenty of other people you can check out. Check out Jared I, uh, Neves Knives. I do believe he's done a number of videos on sharpening AR RPM9. So there you have it. Uh, now, uh, I'm always talking about Poltergeist Works because um, Jacob over there, and I'm not even going to try and pronounce his last name. I, I I feel like I'm pretty good at pronouncing some last names, but I'm, I'm kind of at a loss 
with Polish. So I'm going to try this. Wysorski Wits. Uh, Jacob Wysorski Wits of Poltergeist Works. Um, you know his designs. If you if you have any real steel or if you're interested in real steel knives, you've seen his designs. I have always been in love with his, uh, hmm, I don't know, simple, modern lines. Uh, he has those signature big giant uh, uh, pivot pin and uh, and sort of pommel uh, a fixture that uh, I've always loved. But he's also not afraid to play in the large knife realm. And he's had this um, uh, phenomena series recently. And they're they're one-offs and they're small, um, small uh, custom uh, pieces, but they inform designs that go into production with companies like Real Steel. So I'm, I'm really interested. Even though I know I'm not going to have this knife ever, uh, I'm interested because downstream there might be a knife by him uh, through Real Steel this size that I can't, that I can't afford. Woo. Uh, so this one uh, is really super cool. Uh, it's the phenomena. Uh, what is this? The phasma, um, and and it's the number four of the phenomena series, and it's got a four inch blade. Now this is four inches. This is shrinking it down from the third one, the phenomena three, which was a four and a half inch beast. I mean that's what I'm talking about. People need to be making more of these four and a half inch frame lock folders. Uh, it's got a very long uh, sort of front section as a tanto and a very acute pointy tip and no real discernible um, demarcation between the front bevel and the back bevel, the main bevel, uh, but just an absolutely gorgeous uh, titanium frame lock flipper. You've got the thumb disc, which I love, and uh, but also the flipper, which in this case I love. Not always a flipper fan. Uh, but a simple, classic, aggressive design. Uh, two things I want to point out. I love the shape of the Tanto with that long, uh, you know, you could almost round out the uh, the the point there and, and make it a, you know, just a full belly drop point. Uh, but you've get, you get this gentle transition there to a very acute point and a swedge which I love, but also on the pommel, that pommel is perfect for capping with your thumb. I don't need to have it in hand. I wish I did, but I don't need to have it in hand to know that, that it would be great for that. So real steel, please make this knife. I mean, this is, uh, this is, this is perfect. Four inch blade. You've got a beautifully shaped blade and a great pommel. So please make it, please make it in titanium. I will buy it. Also, not for nothing, uh, he really has a cool-looking um, clip on that uh, on that knife, and I've seen it on the other Phasma and uh, Phenomena knives. Still to come in the state of the collection, we take a look at a Gareth Bull design, and then the top 12 most carried knives in my collection. Please stay tuned on the Knife Junkie podcast. Have a knife you want featured or reviewed? Call the Knife Junkies 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and let us know. So I have uh, this first knife from the state of the collection under the knife cam with my left hand, but I know I won't be able to open it with my left hand. This is an inline flipper, and I'm throwing up the air quotes because uh, I've seen it written like that uh, in Knife News recently. Ben Schwartz, I hope you coined that. Uh, inline flipper instead of a front flipper because I don't know it's in line with the spine I guess uh, okay I'm gonna try and open this with my left hand oh okay that wasn't so bad all right so this is the Gareth Bull designed drop distributed and we manufactured Mura now what is a Mura a Mura is a breed of Spanish fighting bull sounds really cool uh, I mean, already I love the name. I like the sound of it, Mura, but I like knowing that it's named after a fighting bull breed. and uh, Or maybe it's designed after the Lamborghini from the 60s that's designed after the fighting bull breed. Any way you, you slice it, it's a beautiful, beautiful knife and a, a great name. Uh, oftentimes, you'll hear me kind of come down on carbon fiber. It's, it's not a material that I gravitate towards. 
unless it's sort of irregular. I like the marble carbon fibers and the shred carbon fibers and those kind of things. This is sort of a regular weave, but it's contoured uh, on this about four inch handle. And uh, it does make this a more visually attractive carbon fiber to me. Uh, in hand, it feels great. It's got a titanium, beautifully sculpted titanium uh, clip there. Pretty generous under there too. You could fit some reinforced seamed pockets. You know, you could jam that over there. You've got a carbon fiber uh, backspacer there. But look at this knife overall. It is, well, okay, I guess I should show off the blade before I, I get to that. It's hollow ground, really thin behind the edge. I mean, this is a, a definitely a wee knife hollow grind. Beautiful full length swedge here. Just a, I love the shape and the design. You've got a thumb ramp here, which works great with really excellent jimping. And if you needed to, you could put your finger there or your thumb there, it fits nicely. Just a gorgeous knife. All right, so here, here are my things with it. Um, I would love this knife larger. This one deserves to be larger. Uh, it's a three and a quarter inch. Let's see, one. I take it back. It's a three inch blade. I want it to be three and a quarter so that I can say they should bump it up to three and a half at least. So it's a little short for my, my pleasure. Uh, but, uh, and, and outstanding in every way. Uh, the one thing is, tell me, do you think that this is a cross between a Terzuola and a Harsey? To me, this looks like a, uh, a William Harsey knife and a Bob Terzuola knife just had a baby. And it was this Gareth Bull Mira. What do you think? What do you think? And I, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I understand that in art and in design, um, we are always standing on the shoulders of giants and we are always working with what came before us. Um, as someone who went through years of art school, I understand that. I also understand being enamored with certain designs and, and uh, certain visual themes and having them soak into your own work. So I'm not saying this as a diss, but does anyone else see this? Uh, there's definitely a Terzuola oid uh, design to that handle and uh, this area here and also Harsey. Just curious. I like it uh, a lot. I would love to make this knife mine. I would love it if they made a larger version of this. And uh, I'm not sure if front flippers or quote unquote inline flippers have come uh, any further since that was designed, but they're they're still not the easiest thing for me. And maybe I'm an old dog and that's a new trick. Uh, but anyway, there you have it. This is the Drop uh, Distributed Wee Knives Manufactured Gareth Bull Designed Mura. A beautiful knife um, with, I think, some inspiring inspiration. <laughs> All right, next. This is a funny one. Uh, this was a company that reached out to me. They saw uh, I, I did a... Uh, there was a company that reached out to me from China saying, we want to break into the American knife world. Will you take a look at this knife? And I said, yes. And I did. And I gave an honest review. And, uh, you know, they, I think to, to be interesting to our American market, they would have a number of things to do to their knives. Um, but that was, I think that's what they were looking for. So I gave them an honest assessment. Someone else saw that and reached out to me, uh, I think for the same kind of review. Well, anyway, that's the kind of review I'm gonna give them. I'm gonna take a look at this knife, uh, use it a little bit and give them the positives and the, uh, the negatives. And uh, this one is a knife from a company called Annihilate, Annihilate Knives, cross border. And um, I've had a number of companies reach out to me and, and oftentimes I kind of just, yeah. Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm kind of uh, full up right now, but this one I went for, it looked a little bit interesting to me. First of all, uh, it's got a tech lock on the back. Very nice uh, way to keep it on your belt and a very good Kydex sheath. 
but this is the Eli uh, Annihilate Knives cross border. And, and let me just open with calling knives Annihilate is a problem. It's a problem because Annihilate, uh, you know, just means d destroy beyond all recognition, I guess. And uh, if you're, if you're, if you're in any sort of legal situation and you happen to have a knife on you called Annihilate, it's going to be difficult to, you know, say that it's a work knife or something like that. Uh, but I saw the recurve tantooiness, not just the recurve of the main edge, but the recurve of the secondary edge. And, uh, well, I said send it along. And um, they were very uh, kind to do so. And I'm going to I'm going to give a full review of this knife. It, it has some positives for sure. It's it is definitely a pry bar. It is a sharpened pry bar. And look at the look at the main bevel. I mean, it is uh, more obtuse than an axe. I, I but they went to special measure <laughs> to get it that way. So uh, that's part of it. So I'll discuss it as a sharpened pry bar more than a slicing knife or something like that. Um, it's got texturing that is beyond aggressive. It's got it's got a cityscape of G10 that sticks out of the surface that unless you're wearing gloves, I would imagine is going to tear your hand up in any sort of, uh, um, you know, strenuous activity with this knife. Uh, without gloves, it might be a problem. We'll, we'll talk about that. I'll take a look at all of that. Uh, it's got a brain basher, noggin knocker, whatever you want to call it, on the end that if it were removed would make this perfect for reverse grip. But since it's there, it, eh, not so much. Actually, this knife I have discovered is really good in reverse grip, tip down, edge in, sort of Pical style. Don't think it was intended for that, but I'll go through all of that in a video I'm going to do of this knife. But one thing I want to mention, show, and see if any of you have seen anything like this in the past. Let me know what you think. But look at look at the spine of the blade of the Tang in crossing. Here, let me, let me hold it like this. See if I can get it to focus. All right, there you go. You can see it looks like one, two, three, four, five. It looks like maybe 10 thin plates of steel. Maybe forge welded together. But if they're for, <laughs> forge welded, I'm not sure I'd see all those lines. You don't see them in the blade part because the blade has been polished and ground and all of that uh, to a greater extent than the handle. But what is up with this? Does anyone know? All right, so just um, uh, a, a matter of interest and focus and something I'll be looking at. Now, I can hear some of your thoughts. I think maybe you're thinking, Bob, that's obviously a knife that you wouldn't buy. That's obviously a knife that you don't want or to collect and that kind of thing. So why are you, is it? <clears throat> so I guess I'm just interested. And if someone is uh, uh, genuinely wants my opinion about how to make a knife better uh, and, and possibly, uh, you know, fill a niche in the market, uh, I got to say, I'm a little bit flattered by that. And, and I want to give my two cents, like why the, why the holes cut out in the, in the, why is this not the main bevel? Why is there, you know, so I, I, I don't know whether or not they take my word and, and, and make changes. I don't know if that's going to happen, but anyway, I'm interested. Um, what do you think? Am I, am I, uh, well, I don't know. What do you think? Let me know on the listener line, 724-466-4487. Uh, what do you think of Annihilate Knives? What do you think of my taking a look at Annihilate Knives? I'm interested. Anyway, going to put this one away for now and take a look. Keep an eye out for the video uh, whenever that comes out. I have been a little slow on videos, but I plan on changing that as the season turns. All right, enough said about that. Okay, so my 12 most carried knives recently. I decided to take a look um, and really kind of quantify what I was carrying. I couldn't keep it to 10. I oftentimes like to keep things to 10, but it had to be 12. So I'll try and keep this uh, moving swiftly. First, and this is not in a particular order. 
You know it. You love it. Whoops. Sorry. <laughs> Left hand. Uh, the Demco Knives AD20. Just an absolutely awesome hard use knife. Just an awesome knife in general. The first one to feature the Shark Lock, which you can now get on the more uh, palatable to the wallet AD20.5. Also smaller and easier to carry knife. Um, this is just an awesome thing. I purchased this from uh, Rivers Edge Cutlery in Ohio. Uh, it was actually, um, I was alerted to it by Lavender Pants. He sent me a, a message. Look at what they have at my local knife store. And uh, he bought it for me and I paid him back. Look at this thing. I love it in the red. I've never been much of a red G10 guy, but I've been doing a lot of red and burgundy recently. Loving it. So this one to me sounds a little bit like a shotgun, sort of, sort of a little bit like a shotgun. <laughs> it's got an, it's got a great sound to it anyway. All right. So this is one of them. The next one is also a red knife. Uh, one that I've been, one that I've been loving uh, because a, it's got this beautiful maroon red color, but also it's bone. It's got a bone cover on a very modern flipper knife. This is the model 1929 from Finch Knives. 1929 was the year that the uh, Grand Teton National Forest opened up. And uh, the guys over there at Finch Knife Company are fishermen and outdoorsmen and hikers and such. And uh, the national parks mean a lot to them and uh, especially Grand Teton. So they named this one after Grand Teton. You got this beautiful clip point blade that is fully flat ground and thin like a scalpel, but robust enough at the spine that you can, you can do a lot of work with this thing. Uh, this is called Nightcrawler Cut Bone. So you can tell what the cut means, but the Nightcrawler, it's dyed in this red fashion so that it looks with its dark spots, dark bloody looking spots, and then lighter spots, it looks like a night crawler. Little, uh, little ode or little uh, tip of the hat to their fishing love. All right, so that is the Finch 1929. Been carrying that a lot as my secondary knife in my left hand pocket. And man, I'm just loving that thing. It is such a keen, keen cutter. All right, so the next one I've been carrying quite a bit, uh, and this is an old knife. Mm. I got it, well, maybe five or so years ago. But somewhere along the line, I had it reground, and I got a couple of scales made for it. But since I recently bought the Hinderer Knives Micarta, traditionally textured red Micarta scale here, this... Uh, Burgundy, my card. I've been carrying this thing nonstop over the last uh, couple of weeks. This is my Hinderer XM18 Spanto with reground blade. Look at that. Hollow ground to a super thin behind the edge uh, geometry and a very nice flat front there. He sharpened the spine. This was a uh, razor edge knives did this. For a long time, I had a custom made um, Python micarta scale on there. And it just was too cheesy. Something about it was just looking too cheesy to me. So I decided to uh, seek this out. I love burgundy lately on knife handles. And I found a burgundy um, canvas micarta uh, scale from the Hinderer factory with the Hinderer texture, which I love. Got it. And I've just been carrying this thing all the time. Love it. That's interesting. First three knives here are red in handle material. We've got the uh, red AD20. We've got the um, Nightcrawler Bone Finch 1929. And then, and then we have the Burgundy Canvas Micarta XM18. Huh. Interesting. Do you find that as interesting? Let me know on the listener line. <laughs> You're like, no, it's not. All right. So fourth, is also a beautifully colored knife, but we're going to go to the other side of the color spectrum. This is my DLC coded TRM. That's Three Rivers Manufacturing Atom. 
gorgeous knife. And in many lights, it's hard to tell that it's black coated, DLC coated. Uh, it's kind of an interesting phenomena with this knife. So this one, if you can see right there near the plunge line on the clip side of the blade, you can see a little imperfection there. Well, that is how I got this knife. You see the two dots? Let's see. Come on, focus camera. All right, if you can see, there are two dots next to the USA in TRM USA. And that means that these are factory seconds because something went wrong with the coating. And in my case here, it was that little, little marring right there, lozenge shaped marring on the, uh, the off uh, on the clip side near the plunge grind. That's what made this knife not suitable for sale or not suitable for full sale, full price sale. So anyway, I got this and then I was lucky enough to get these GL Hansen and Sons uh, Green Mountain, I think they're called, uh, G Carta handle scales. Thank you, Marianne. That was all Marianne who hooked this up for me. I really appreciate it. Gave me a great price and gave me access. So I do appreciate that. I I got to say, um, <clears throat> these TRM knives, I have two atoms, one in DLC like this and one in the regular satin 20 CV. These knives really are worth the hype. They really are that outstanding. And uh, if you know me and my tastes, I tend towards the more overtly tactical. I tend towards the more the more overtly macho or something. I don't know what the right word is, but these thin, precise, beautifully made, nice to look at, perfect size, great in hand knives are just really worth it. So if you're interested in those characteristics and that capability, check out these TRM Adams and check out the Neutron, the smaller brother. Now, they're not the easiest knives in the world to get, um, but if you can get your hands on them, a uh, Facebook group apparently is a great place to go, uh, join their Facebook group and you'll, you'll get advance notice on drops and such. And there are a lot of people there who buy and sell TRMs. Uh, so you can do it that way. But I got my first one on the secondary and I got this one from Marianne herself and they are not exorbitantly expensive. They're just hard to get because they don't make them in giant batches. Uh, but I highly recommend them. And this is a very prized knife. I've been carrying it quite a bit uh, since my birthday. And, uh, well, I love it. So TRM Adam is next. You've got three reds and one green. Next, straight titanium. This is another one that's got, man, this knife is just, uh, boy, it's got endless, endless character. This is the Crystal Aurora designed by Ivan Braganetz out of Russia. And this knife came to me from Levon of the Knife Nuts podcast. He has a great uh, little importing business. I say little, it's growing importing business where he's um, getting some great knives out of Russia and importing them into the States and making them available to all of us. And uh, this, he's got a lot of cool ones, uh, but this one, man, I saw this and I just couldn't, couldn't help myself. Uh, this was a lying in bed just waking up on a Saturday morning purchase, which there aren't many of those, uh, especially considering my wife is right there next to me. <laughs> so uh, this one I got because of that amazing king size fuller. But uh, it's a very, very sharp knife in both actual sharpness and in looks. Uh, designed by Ivan Braganetz. It's got great bearing action. Very thin, very light titanium handle scales. You can see all the milling and all the pocketing in there to make it lightweight. And also that uh, large fuller makes the blade lighter weight. And like I've said many times, you look at the spine, it's quite substantial. Uh, but in traversing this fuller, you can tell it was hollow ground because down here it's extra thin. It's thinner than it would be if it came down in a straight line in any case. And uh, the thing is just wickedly, insanely sharp. And it's also got beautiful milling on the side. These lines act as jimping. So you get a nice purchase on this blade. And uh, you also get that on the clip, which I really appreciate. 
such a such a cool knife. Ivan Braganetz is a great designer. Uh, he did the Rokat for Real Steel, and uh, the Rokat is also a uh, uh, an import that Levan is offering. Though I think they might all be sold out at this point. Okay, so that's the Crystal Aurora. Crystal Aurora. Uh, next is the uh, is the <laughs> Yo Jumbo from Spiderco and Michael Janich. I was talking Michael Janich before. I love his designs. I uh, I love them all. Uh, I guess I would say in terms of looks, uh, the Yo Jumbo too. In terms of function, the Yo Jumbo. I just love the full four inch blade. Of the Yojumbo. Naturally, as you uh, expand a knife, its ergonomics change, which means its design will change. This knife feels great in hand, though uh, it came, uh, you know, it ships with a little partition here in the handle. So there's like a two finger choil and a two finger choil. That didn't really work for me, so I just sanded that down with a Dremel. It doesn't, uh, didn't affect anything because the liners did not extend up into that peak. So I just sanded that down with my Dremel and this is perfect for me. And if you've got giant hands, you might sand this down too. No problem. The liner does not extend up into that peak either. So if you wanted a totally flat uh, sort of neutral handle, which I've seen a lot of people do, uh, you could do that easily. For my size hands, it works to leave that. Um, so this hollow ground worn cliff is just, uh, it's so beautiful, so perfect, such a great, um, utility knife, but also such a great self-defense knife. And at four inches, it really, it tickles my sweet spot. Uh, the, the three and a quarter inch Yojimbo to me looks better. Uh, so take that for what it's worth. Uh, this knife, I still might do a little choil thing here where I take a Dremel, sacrifice a quarter inch of cutting edge right there and put a little choil there so that I can I can uh, kind of do this kind of thing where I, I cheat up, choke up a little bit. I've seen that done. It looks really awesome. So I might do that myself. But uh, Yojimbo or the Yojimbo, ever since I got it, this is S30V. I've been carrying this quite a bit. I would love to see that in the uh, Jade G10 and DLC coated M4 um, Blade HQ version. I would definitely buy that uh, in a heartbeat. So the Yojumbo is a big one. Now, I, I can't go too long without carrying an Emerson. And the one that I've been carrying the most recently is a newish one. It's not my most new, but it's... It's new-ish, and that's the Tiger, the Emerson Tiger. It's such a great knife because it does a lot of different things in one knife. First of all, it has a, a clip point, and if you know Ernest Emerson, his clip points are a signature. Uh, just got a beautiful clip point, but it's also banana-shaped. It's that curved sort of CQC8 or, or ZT0630 style clip point. So it's uh, it's not a straight Bowie. It's got a curve to it. And <laughs> to me, it's extremely beautiful, but also incredibly useful. Another thing about this Tiger that I love is that it's got that hugely generous um, wave, similar to the waves that you'll see on the ZT Emersons. Even, even more generous, even larger. And I like that because if you're actually using the wave because you're drawing your knife because you need it really fast, the more generous, the better. <laughs> it's going to open up on you uh, even easier. That being said, if you're trying to retrieve this knife from your pocket without opening it, uh, just always be sure to do this. Just put your finger over the blade so that as you pull it, it's not going to want to snag on your pocket. Just do that. Learn to do that and everything will be fine. The other thing about the uh, Emerson Tiger that I absolutely love is right here. It's got the CQC 13 handle. 
it's the most ergonomic, most uh, encapsulating, uh, probably the most comfortable Emerson handle out there. Um, not only does it have this great forward finger choil that will not permit you to slide up onto the blade in a thrust, but it's got this very generous bird's beak in the back that is great for a number of things. First of all, to re resist centrifugal force. If you're slashing, that's going to that's gonna stay in your hand. But also in reverse grip, this excellent peak for capping it with your thumb that fits perfectly right there and makes this CQC 13 or now Tiger handle just outstanding. So this is one of my absolute favorite Emersons out there. And this is a, a somewhat recent production. So it's got the uh, single detent and easier to flick open. Just a great knife. Bought that on the secondary market. Thank you, Blade Forums. Next is a, as a, in my EDC, it's more of an EDC category. And by that, I mean smaller. Uh, the next couple of knives are going to be smaller. This is the Concept Knives Main Street, designed by Dirk Pinkerton. I love Dirk Pinkerton designs. He really excels at this sort of Warncliffe style. He's had a number of them. The Kaiser Shard, which is smaller, but this looks a lot like this. Uh, the Concept Main Street. He's got the Little Main Street. This one is mismarked Little Main Street, but this is actually a Main Street. Little Main Street is much smaller. And uh, just a great uh, thumb stud knife on bearings with this incredibly fetching, um, what do you call that, burlap micarta, really nice, um, what do you call it, liner lock, <laughs> sorry, uh, really nice liner lock, nice sculpted clip, not sure if that's titanium, probably is, uh, standoffs and everything, but just an outstanding knife. And the second Pinkerton knife that has, or designed knife that has this weird sort of jimping on the back of the hand, uh, uh, back of the blade. It's it's not really effective at all. It's just there for kind of looks. It's like scalloping on either side. Uh, maybe it's there to help you index. I'm not sure. But what what an out incredibly useful blade shape this is. This fully straight bladed worn cliff is really, really useful. Uh, so this gets carried in the waistband quite a bit. If I'm not carrying a fixed blade knife, this is usually the one that's there lately. Uh, nice and thin blade stock, great action, great handle. Warm to the touch is this micarta. So uh, there you go. Dirk Pinkerton designed Concept Main Street. Next is one that I've been carrying a lot, uh, kind of to and fro. This is one that's in the car with me a lot. This is one that's in my pajama pants. Sorry to paint that picture. Uh, but this is one that uh, I carry in gym shorts a lot this summer. Uh, and that is the Off-Grid Knives Cayman EDC. I think EDC is actually in the name. Uh, but this is a three and a quarter inch clip point blade. That clip point blade looks like a Cayman. I came in the small crocodilian. I say crawl be small because it's not uh, it's not like giant like a crocodile in Australia or something like that. But it's a crocodile type animal. Uh, lives in the Pantanal and other wetlands down in um, South America. That's what this was named after. And if you look at that blade, it looks like the snout of a caiman, but just a super aggressive. Uh, and useful clip point blade shape. And the package it comes in is extremely pleasing. It's got uh, texture G10, okay, very kind of run of the mill texture G10, uh, kind of like um, on this model, I would say it's kind of like tenacious G10. Really nice ergonomics. It, this thing fills the hand in such a pleasing way, not just in this sort of saber grip or or forward grip but also in reverse grip really really nice you got a great place to put your thumb you got some jimping here great place to put your thumb up here nice little flat spot and then these curves just nestle 
into the back of the fingers and into the palm so nicely. So though this is an EDC at three and a quarter inches, uh, it's a very aggressive blade shape. You could definitely turn this towards your more tactical applications. Uh, the action is really smooth. Uh, this is one of those knives that came very smooth on bearings, but after a couple of days of opening and closing and flipping it, um, the, uh, the bearings definitely wore a nice uh, race in the coating and it just you know falls shut great knife great knife off grid has just been knocking it out of the park uh this was produced by best tech knives uh off off grid also has a knife made by we that's the scorpion their high-end their elite uh category is made by we they're more everyday knives best tech best tech makes awesome knives i really like the stuff i've i've uh, experienced made by them Okay, three more knives. Two of them are fixies, uh, but the last folder is one that I've been popping in my pocket a lot because I can't resist this knife. It's awesome. Okay, I'll just do it. This is the off-grid, I mean the, uh, <laughs> what am I doing? Let me start over. This is the Vero Engineering Synapse. This knife, I got it, Blade Show 2021 from the man himself, Joseph, and his wife uh, sold me this. And oh my goodness gracious. I mean, this is this is a knife that I carry just to experience the action. Uh, of course, it is very sturdy and gr uh, ground super thin. It's very slicey, extremely sharp and useful. But the thing that really draws me to this is the action. Part of that is with this amazing flipper tab. It's just a little protrusion of the tab forward on the bolster with a little bit of that bolster cut away, leaving just a little bit of jimped tang. <laughs> that just sounds dirty. At the end, you just grab it with your finger, pull it back, and oh, the action is just outstanding. The opening action and then the closing, it's a guillotine. For sure, it's a guillotine. One of the smoothest knives in my collection. Definitely one of the smoothest I've ever experienced. I would love to get a large Vero engineering knife. Uh, this thing will do until the large gets here. Just an absolutely gorgeous shape. And, uh, you know, I tend not to like these double finger, finger choils. But on this one, it feels great. I, I actually put my forefinger up here on the bolster. Instead of coming all the way back here, forefinger on the bolster, second two fingers in that swedge, and then just hold it and use it like this. That way also, this pocket clip, which has a pretty steep ramp on it, which has been fixed in more recent incarnations, uh, that is a bit of a hot spot in some grips. But if you hold it like this, with your with your thumb on this jimping and your finger up here on the, on the uh, tang in the bolster, Oh my God, this knife is just great. I love it. And here's an interesting uh, tidbit here. This is a bolster lock, as you can see. Uh, it's a frame lock basically, but the inlay on the lock side comes far enough, far enough up that the only visible part of the lock on the outside is within the uh, confines or the borders of that bolster. So it's called a bolster lock. Um, that bolster lock there uh, prevents you from uh, sort of depressing the, the lock in with your fingers when you're holding it. And that can be a problem with these uh, smaller flipper uh, frame locks, I find. Uh, I will hold in the, you know, be depressing the lock accidentally just in holding it and uh, and sort of slowing down the action. So Anyway, having this be a bolster lock, having that kind of flipper tab that doesn't doesn't bump into anything in your pocket, and then just this silky smooth action, uh, it's been irresistible. I've just been popping it in my pocket, my left pocket, a lot. All right, last two knives are um, fixed blade knives. You know, I carry a lot of fixed blade knives, uh, but these two have been getting an especial, especially a lot of action. 
Uh, that didn't sound right, but you know what I mean. Uh, this first one you've seen quite a bit of. This is the Voodoo by Kramer Custom Knives, Eric Kramer. And uh, I got to say, I love how he made this sheath. He put these two grommets in line so that with the with the uh, with the um, clip here, it's not offline and and canted at, at a weird angle. So nice job on that. But this is the knife. It's the Voodoo. It is a Persian inspired clip point. And uh, I asked him to sharpen the swedge on this, which he very kindly obliged. And I know a lot of people ask for that from him because this is such a great little, little self-defense knife. You've got about a three and a half inch full bellied cutting edge here, very thinly hollow ground. I mean, very thin. And then uh, the swedge, which is naturally going to be much more uh, oblique, is still sharpened to a skin splitting edge. So um, it's not uh, it's not going to be slicing cucumbers, but it's going to be uh, doing a lot of damage on a pull cut or on uh, any sort of um, ga uh, flick or or anything like that. So this is a this is a really great secondary knife or self defense knife or in the waistband knife. It's very thin, natural tan canvas micarta. Uh, just a gorgeous knife. I can't I can't get enough of this knife. So that leads me to believe I'm going to have to in the future get another. Um, Eric Kramer custom knife. Now I've been talking about getting his Grinch uh, in the SOG Mac SOG V Mac V SOG Bowie grind, but lately I've been seeing his Grinch in the in the dagger grind. And sorry, people, I might have to go that way. All right, last you've stuck with me. Thank you for sticking with me for an hour because this last one is worth the wait. This is my JB Knives ditch pick. I've been carrying this one quite a bit since I got it. It's got such a great, let's, let's talk about the handle first. That handle is so perfect. It is the perfectly shaped handle. Feels great in hand. I mean, this thing um, just melts in your hand. It gives your thumb a great place to land here up on top. You've got You've got this contour here to accept your thumb fat. You've got this swelling out to nestle in the palm. I mean, this thing is an ergonomic masterpiece. And then you get to the blade. That wicked, wicked double-edged Persian-style, Pical-style blade. Uh, and look at how thin this is. You can't tell. Here, let me... I'll hold it up against... Um, I'll hold it up against this here little finch. Look at the look at the difference between the blade steels, the stock thicknesses. That finch is like three times the thickness of this JB knives ditch pick. So yeah, this is not a survival knife. This is not a uh, um, you know you're not going to be batoning wood with this or doing too many robust acts other than uh, you know sewing machining it into a faux. I don't know. I mean, that's really what it is. That's what this is for. So uh, anyway, I love it. It's a, such a great knife, beautiful design. And uh, I love their logo. I've been seeing a, a, someone has been showing one off that's single edged. This forward edge is not sharp and it's got like a white, like an ivory G10. That's, that's sort of got a rock pattern in it. And ah, Oh, makes my heart thump. All right. So there we go. That is, these are my 12 most carried knives recently in the EDC scenario. Let me rattle them off for you. Demco knives, 8020. We've got the uh, Finch knives model 1929. Got the XM18 by Hinderer in the reground Spanto. Uh, we've got TRM Adam, oh, the Crystal Aurora. Spiderco Yo Jumbo, Emerson Tiger. We got the Main Street by Concept Knives and Dirk Pinkerton. We got the Off Grid Cayman, the Vero Engineering Synapse, and then the Kramer Custom Knives Voodoo Double Edged JB Double Edged JB Knives Ditch Pick. <sighs> that was exhausting. All right, so I have uh, been carrying these the most recently. As you know, things change. This is summer carry. 
as uh, as fall moves in and winter and such, things will change. I'll be able to carry slightly larger fixed blade knives uh, under the sweater, under the uh, under the Mister Rogers sweater, and um, so things things will change. Maybe I'll do this on a quarterly basis. Rattle off my twelve most uh, most worn knives. So uh, there you go. There you have it. Uh, coming up on episode 250 of the Knife Junkie podcast, check out Jonathan Caruso of Lead Lil Knives. Uh, Jonathan is a guy that I met through Hogtooth Knives, Matt Chase. And um, he's also a dude that I recognized because he won Forged in Fire uh, in season six. Great guy, a former Marine, making just forging beautiful knives. Uh, so join us on Sunday for episode 250 of the Knife Junkie podcast. That's Jonathan Caruso of Lead Lil Knives. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Call us on the old uh, phone line there, 724-466-4487. And then also, please, please join us Thursday night on Thursday Night Knives, our live stream. It's so much fun. And uh, you can join us right on screen by going to the knifejunkie.com slash join, turning your phone on you and uh, pressing go. And there, there, we get to talk on screen. So do all that or don't do all that, but just join us here on the knifejunkie.com. All right. So for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I am Bob, the Knife Junkie DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Knife Junkie.